ABC Radio Canberra, this is Anna Vito. Now, today has been a painful one for many members in our community. Come 11am, many Canberrans, painfully, wistfully, maybe even a little resentfully, extricated themselves from their social media networks and went into a self-imposed exile. Why? Well, because social media is not a good place to be when you're trying to avoid news about a massive cultural event. It doesn't get much more massive than this. So if you, like me, have been sweating it out all day, the wait is almost over. Perhaps you are even now in your car on your way home to finally, finally watch the first episode of the last season of Game of Thrones. Or perhaps you've spent your entire day rolling your eyes and being irritated as people gasp and hand to their chest exclaim, what? You've never seen it? How is that even possible? Well, whichever camp you fall into, and no judgment here, the fact does remain that Game of Thrones has taken fantasy fiction well and truly into the mainstream in a way that few other things have ever managed to do. Why? And just how excited should we be by this uh, last season anyway? Well, Joe Holm, of course, The Watchmen. Local film and TV buff is with me in the studio. G'day, Joe. G'day. It's such an exciting day. It's 560 something days, and finally we get to the final season of finally, Game of Thrones. It's hit, my, my fingertips are tingling with anticipation. Now, look, you have seen the episode. I have. I have not. Mm-hmm. This is a spoiler free zone. Oh. I'm afraid to even ask you whether or not you enjoyed it, but the smile on your face is suggesting to me that it's not a bad episode. Look, it's just good to have it back. Like that's the, that's I won't spoil anything. I, the, I have a rule with spoilers and it's don't be a jerk. Don't give anything away. Um, it's just great to have it back on the screen. And it's, it's, it's event television and it's such a rare thing these days in the days of binge watching and all that sort of stuff. This kind of show brings people together. If you're a fan of it, you can talk about it with other fans and it brings people together. Hence, no spoilers until at least maybe tomorrow, you know. Yeah, you've got to at least give people a chance to watch it as it airs on the actual television, like in the old days, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So give us a sense, first of all, for you, Joe, if people have been listening to their colleagues, you know, hyperventilate all day and they don't get it, what is it for you about Game of Thrones? So I think it just covers um, lots of issues that are important to us today. As much as it's set in this fantasy realm uh, of Westeros, it still covers issues that are important like climate change. You know, winter is coming. It's obviously in reverse to what we experience. Indeed. Um, you know, the awareness of political corruption, that that's a huge theme within a lot of the series. Uh, the rise of the feminine archetype. There's some very, very strong female characters. Uh, what else have we got? Religious extremism and the fear of what's beyond the wall or over the oceans. These are all issues that we face in day-to-day life. Uh, and I think that's what it is. Also, there's that... Uh, the, the moral ambiguity of some of the characters. There's no good or bad guys. There's people that are faced with decisions that they have to make within the moments. And I think we can all relate even to some of the more notorious or bad characters uh, with some of the decisions that they have to make in the show. There's lots of stuff going on in there. There's heaps and heaps of characters. And they also break a lot of the rules too. There was mm. uh, they, They've done some stuff. It's fairly groundbreaking. There is a lot of violence in there. There is a lot of sex. There's a lot of stuff that you wouldn't experience sort of in your more mainstream television to the point where it's become so popular that now it is mainstream. Mm. Yeah. For good and ill, I think, but we, yeah. we might we might get to that. Um, <laughs> from one from one unsigned texter, Game of Thrones chat on the radio, la, 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 I'm not listening, la, 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 spoilers. It's okay, texter, <laughs> no spoil, guaranteed, no spoilers tonight because I haven't seen it yet either and so it's okay, I promise. Yeah, and your producer actually said that you would reach over the... I literally would throttle, leap yeah. across the desk to, to throttle you, yeah, Joe. Yeah, it's a yes, safe space. I'm sorry. It's yep. a safe space. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Louise has also texted though to say, I have never ever watched one single episode of Game of Thrones. I may still, but I never have. So for people like Louise, so that they under, understand kind of where we're coming from, mm. give us a bit of a, a snapshot, if you can, Joe, of this sweeping story what is the state of play as we pick up the story at the beginning oh, of this season? Oh, boy. Well, the state of play. I mean, there's been, there's so much has happened in seven <laughs> seasons. Do Where do you start? I mean, okay, so there's a guy who's probably the rightful heir to a throne who he's not sure of uh, and thought that he was the bastard son of another king in another area. There's all these different 
different royal families clashing together, but there's this huge menace that is happening over the other side of the wall, which separates sort of the civilized society from uh, the wild society. And these creatures are coming down from the north and they're bringing all of these families together to basically do battle against these creatures. And that is about as simple as I could make it. That's pretty good. We could talk about it all night, really. We really it's, could. It's, it, you could go very deep. We really could. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about theories. Mm-hmm. So not not spoiling stuff, but just the, the rampant speculation that there has existed with this show since the very moment that it premiered. In fact, longer since yep. the moment that the books were published. Do you have a favourite th- fan theory that you are hoping comes true, Joe? Oh, geez. I, you know... I, I don't actually try and get too much into the fan theories. I just kind of, uh, for want of a better word, there's a lot of sex in this show. I was going to say, I, I just lay back and let it all happen. Um, <laughs> I think it's so unpredictable and I've become so used to all these huge twists and turns. And every time you get attached to a character, chances are they're going to meet their end fairly soon thereafter. So I've given up on theories and I'm just kind of letting it all happen. I guess the biggest theory that I have now is that that, uh, you know, uh, I can't even say without wanting to spoil it, actually. Okay, all right. So I'm not going to go there. I respect that. I'm not going to go there. I respect yeah. that, Joe Holm. I respect that. <laughs> Joe Holm is my guest, the Watchman, of course, um, local film and TV buff critic, uh, talking about Game of Thrones, which, of course, if you haven't seen it already, some of you may be on your way home to see or waiting for the kids to go to bed before yeah. you finally get a chance to watch it yourself. Um, Joe, as you say, so much of Game of Thrones does seem to come down to who survives yeah. at the end. Do you have a do you have thoughts about people who will not make it to the end of this season? I'm I think a lot of them aren't going to make yeah. it. I mean, we've already so this is this is common news to everyone. Yes. Anyone who's read anything in the lead up to this coming up is that there's going to be lots of very very big battles. Uh, that apparently there's going to be like you know a movie length battle within the middle of this series. So obviously there's going to be a lot of people that don't mm. make it. You know. Um, uh, they 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 sort of twisted it a, a few times where they they killed Jon Snow off earlier on in the piece and look sorry if you haven't seen an episode I guess look, but... when we say no spoilers we mean of what's to come current season right we're yeah. assuming that you're up to date for the purposes yeah. of this conversation absolutely geez I hope I haven't ruined it <laughs> um, you know and then they bring back and then they, you know so there's all this like will they or won't they kind of stuff with this and uh, you just the the beauty of this show is that you never know what is going to happen. You never know what's lying around the corner. So, um, you know, fan theories, all that sort of stuff, uh, I don't know, uh, big battles, lots of people are going to bite it in this one, I think. I think you're probably right. Yep. Joe, of course, the big difference, one of the big differences, there are many, between the books and the television show mm-hmm. is just simply its name. So the mm. show, of course, went with Game of Thrones yep. as its title. Does it actually matter, the throne, anymore when there is this White Walker threat? Well, there's still politics. There's mm. still the warring between the families. So there is this looming threat, but there's still all this infighting between, you know, the Targaryens and the Lannisters and, and the Starks and the Greyjoys as to who is going to take the throne. So in spite of everything that's looming over their head, they still crave that power, which is kind of weird. Like I say, this kind of brings people together, being event <laughs> television, uh, and the houses in Game of Thrones still fairly divided. They've all got their own agendas. They're all coming together to kind of deal with this big menace. But what happens after that, mm. if there is an after that? That's what we don't know. Mm. It seems an unlikely show in many ways to be such a big hit, Joe yeah. Holm. Like clearly a lot of money's been spent on it. It looks beautiful. The production value is very high. Mm. But at the same time, as you say, it's incredibly violent. There's a lot of sex. There's a lot of sexual violence. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of incredibly gratuitous nudity. What do you think it is about Game of Thrones that has made it the show that has transcended genre fiction nerds like me? And I think it's you won't be too offended when I say, and you. Yeah, no. um, but, but to be enjoyed by millions and millions of people. Well, I think secretly we're all pretty primal creatures, aren't we? So these things that that are supposedly taboo uh, are things that obviously draw us to it. But like I said, there's those common themes that run through it as well mm. that I think we can relate to from day to day. Um, and, you know, the violence is one thing, the sex is one thing, but I mean, the writing is actually really good. I gave up on the books after the second one because I, I actually didn't really like the books, but I really enjoyed where the TV series was going. And I, I don't think I'll ever go back to the books now because we're too far gone. And actually, George Martin hasn't finished. Uh, he the the TV series has now overtaken the books. So I just think it's it's that 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 really primitive urge that we have to see a little bit of titillation on the screen to to watch. It's an outlet for people, right? Mm. It's an escape from reality, but it still has those common real themes running through it.
Mm. Yeah. Uh, Joe, I suppose before I've, I've, I'm, di- I'm, this is terrible because I'm dying to ask you questions that I don't actually want the answers to. Yeah. So I'm trying to, I'm sorting through questions in my mind like, no, no, shouldn't ask that, shouldn't ask uh-huh. that, shouldn't ask that, really shouldn't ask that either. <laughs> but that's, but that's fine. Um, will we still be standing at the end of, to us as viewers still be standing at the end of tonight's episode? Look, I think so. I mean, it. The, the the episode before this, the season finale was massive. It was Huge. so big. And it, and it just, we need to come down from that a little bit, I mm-hmm. think. Uh, I'm not going to give anything away. I think you're just going to go in there. You're going to be so happy that it's back and you can be in your comfortable place. It's it, And you can, we've only got what? How many episodes are they Well, doing? I think there's six. Six. How many, how long are the episodes, Joe? Uh, so this one only clocked in at about an hour, but I think okay. it's going to build over time. So by the time we get to the end, we're going to get to some movie length stuff. Um, so this is a nice way to kind of ease back into it, go back to your happy place and just kick back and think of Westeros. <laughs> I, I cannot wait. Joe Holm, thank you so much for coming in and talking to me Look, about it and for not you. spoiling it. I, I told too. you, I swear I wouldn't tell anybody anything bad and I've held to it. So thank you for that. What a champ. Thanks so much, Joe.